morning from Prague. It's lovely to be here with you all. Uh, today, I would like to share with you some ideas on the topic of masculinity and the small corpus of Gallic detective short stories by Irori Erskine of Mar. And I'm grateful to the organizers for giving me an impulse to pick up on this work again. These are detective stories, so there will be spoilers, but I hope that if you ever decide to read them, you will find other reasons to enjoy them apart from the plot itself. Richard Stuart Erskine, known by choice as Ruari Erskine of Mar, was very much part of the political and cultural flux of the fin de siècle and of the first decades of the 20th century, and his activities and literary output are extensive and diverse indeed. The part which I'm most interested in at the moment are the five Gallic periodicals which he founded, edited and contributed to. While the most long-lasting one and most influential one in terms of the development of Gallic prose, journalism and literary criticism was Guna Briana, The Year's Voice, today I will be looking at Anskeliche, uh, The Storyteller, which sought to provide lighter content to complement the highbrow seriousness of Guna Briana. In Anskeliche, Erskine published a series of five detective short stories in Gallic, which appeared between 1909 and 1910. They are entitled Grievanan Ian Vichgranul, Adventures of John McRonald. The titles themselves are intriguing, aren't they? You see that the Honorable John McRonald is an investigation agent, and he is somebody who moves in elevated social circles and in the fashionable world of London. Son of a formerly wealthy family fallen upon hard times, he tried unsuccessfully to sell wine on commission, to become an actor and an artist, attempted to restore his fortunes by horse racing, and in the end resorted in his desperation to wandering around the country, staying with friends in their castles and fashionable houses, thus stumbling upon his first case, which finally gets him a suitable occupation of the investigation agent. The stories focus on environment and dialogue rather than on the analysis and the mechanics of the crime, and cases get solved through personal connections, influence and luck. If you read them, uh, you will likely find they are not the most sophisticated of tales when it comes to characterization and the plot, which is, however, not uncommon with short detective fiction of the period in general, but the style is remarkable and they are interesting for a number of other reasons. There was pragmatic motivation behind the creation of the stories. Erskine needed to fill in the content of the issues and to attract readers. Another factor is revivalist motivation. By creating the stories, Erskine was contributing to the corpus of genre fiction and reading for pleasure in Gaelic, subverting the association of Gaelic with serious literature and older modes of writing, following the latest trends and competing with English language production, which as evident from his essays, was something that was programmatically on his agenda. There is also no justification as to why are the stories written in Gaelic, and linguistically, uh, they are interesting too. There are visiting cards and letters in English, and a substantial letter and some random sentences in French, naturally left untranslated by Erskine. And they also brought into Gaelic literature new environments. Only one of them, the last one, Antanamata, the spiritist, deals with Scottish characters, including Lord Tross, and discuss his Scottish aristocracy, which is basically Erskine riding his hobby horse. Uh, it shows awareness of the Gallic world, takes place mostly in Castle Ross and partly in Glasgow, and the plot touches upon the second site. By choosing to write detective stories, Erskine was tapping into a well-established trend of the time and also followed on existing tendencies when it comes to gender dynamics. A study in Scarlet appeared in 1887, followed by other novels and the Strand stories, inspiring a number of other series with detectives of different personality, background and specialization. Very often, these stories would feature exclusively male partnerships and communities, the detective, his associate, chronicler, a circle of male listeners, male clients and culprits, uh, but there are also uh, some exceptions. Uh, for instance, Baroness Orzi wrote detective stories featuring female investigators. 
Research of gender aspects of detective fiction is certainly not a novel idea, uh, and Joseph Kestner's influential monograph, Sherlock's Men, Masculinity, Conan Doyle and Cultural History, which discusses the role of detective fiction in promoting certain ideas of masculinity and reflecting changes in them and related anxieties of the period, came out already in 1997, but when it comes to Erskine's tales, it is still a new area. I also uh, wanted to mention that in two cases, Erskine's tales step into yet another trend of the period, and that is into the crossover between detective literature and the ghost story and weird fiction, as there were several special light series for, uh, featuring occult detectives or ghost finders uh, from Algernon Blackwood's John Silence and William Hope Hodgson's Thomas Karnatsky. Arthur Mecken also touched upon it with his pair of amateur antiquarians Dyson and Phillips, um, and in these stories was inspired both by uh, Conan Doyle and Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, there were also detective um, occult series written in partnerships uh, where one member of the team was a woman um, and Erskine's series with John McCrone features two tales with confirmed supernatural explanations, which in the corpus of five is not such a small proportion. The environment of Erskine's Gallic magazines in general was almost exclusively male. I'm saying almost because although I went through all of them issue by issue, there is still the possibility of tracing some women contributors under pseudonyms, but in general you would be hard pressed to find a woman, and the rare feminine presences include mostly saints, such as Joan of Arc, whose picture appeared in the um, annual anthology and Rosarnach, and was presented as being very suitable for framing. Erskine's Catholicism had a strong influence on the magazines in general. So although there is a lot of diversity in terms of contributors and their background, um, there were both traditional speakers and second language users, international contributors, especially from Ireland and Brittany, uh, there is not so much diversity in terms of gender. And when it comes to Erskine and masculinity, uh, it is an intersection of nationalism, class and religion. In Griyavanan, um, Erskine adopts the model um, when the stories are related by a male narrator, uh, in this case, a friend of MacRonald, uh, whose visits serve as a framing for the stories about the individual cases, which are then related by MacRonald himself. So a male friendship serves as the pretext. Uh, here are two extracts, um, one from the very first tale, which introduces um, this cozy male friendship, um, and the second one uh, comes from the fourth installment in the series. As imak uel ahachadni e yan machranul an shut sancho erfek antul asanda an lunin, ach gus ochion gorich harofis riyif akam er marachaye an toshech er kiam agroishin rishavel anam sacho lu chengalche ekanla anju. Hud me ekantaye, agus habata gus andohokak anskil, agus ermachkal is imat rud fir anasach ingantach ahud me vo iany anturasho, agus ameskaich achyarst nishin erandro mo yarak vian fisrechek gutin, is sheshina rira marahanik iany kod guvina investigation agent. Sho anskil ahukehov. Vašej narše su kola iz šine konaltrak sa džespad gukarčel rihele maršin, mu konjučine amhaj šeskrehejn er lacho gara v donjenach sa huk am gjaurak šo hajrijah mun košt. Agus er gašo hlunčin, rajn i jen kol suje sa hrhr s maršin erart. In the tales, there are a number of close male friendships that provide support and rescue at times of crisis. Usually it is one of Macronald's aristocratic friends asking for help. In the first story, it is mentioned that Macronald has an army background, having bought a commission in one of the most fashionable regiments, of course, so indicating roots um, in an exclusively male world. All the family relations the stories mention are between men, be it brothers or a father and a son, and the same is true about professional relations. We encounter aristocrats and their private tutors, secretaries and butlers. But remarkably, this masculine world features some strikingly open manifestations of strong emotions, uh, be it friendly affection, fatherly love or fear. 
even if you just scan through the stories, um, you will notice conspicuously frequent and strong terms of endearment. Uh, Janko, dear John, Avich Krie, my dear literary son of my heart, Ian Methal, Ian Darling. Um, so in the stories, uh, there are men saving and caring for men, men stealing from men, men murdering men, an all-male cast of characters, uh, and one could really call the corpus the curious case of absent women, uh, with one exception. Uh, that is the story Anche Ekandrokrie Nahrach, the most effective of the tales, uh, where MacRonald visits Russia and helps General Ivan Stambulov capture an infamous aristocratic criminal who is a woman and a snake a true fantasical idol of perversity from whom Macronaut is saved by Stambulov's timely gunshot. Now, I would like to give two um, uh, examples that illustrate these manifestations of emotion. In the first one, uh, Lord Ross um, relates to Macronaut uh, the mysterious illness of his only son. Ahunye. Nache alastad antun du nikloni variev akam, is micho gulach el agusis uindo ahad un yin vich avi. Kanyel klach agak migunchun de kumanjie vere gorochasho hosh gusolas, ach gartlich shut erfat orom gusasho. Haikal odom iyan, nachel afehu ermo vach in vinsa, ach bule avash anioch por hein, muthor nima fuchak buonachel gaguhaichel. Agus hiaun na jori shila gu frasach ri gruayen baan avodad vocht. In the following one, which comes from the snake woman tale, there are descriptions of not only manly pluck, but a great deal of manly fear. Um, and here uh, there are many intriguing parallels with William Hope Hodgson's Karnatsky tales that feature extensive depictions of the detective being afraid and defenseless against the forces um, he is dealing with. Vanish Mekel uh, is Muavansa Homol is nach Burinhov Kumel orom hein na small tulik. Jan Mohal is Mohiel Rimohrechen Gubulch. Gerin shows a je nil Bachkeshech odom. His ahuleron a ver Mohian. Ganik good uavasach amiol is lechen sparring mujerek gemunyasht. Ava gulua gamakel. Yech miriskiev alekel amach asmuviel. Jamie, Ivan, Ivan, Grisgum Huchichet, Lemulenyarsh is Art Muhin, Agus Anshin. Mother Hanik Mihukam Hain Arisht, Ren Yen Erai, Vaminan Laya Er Mohruim Eran Talu, is Ivan, is Dakna Life, as Andro Kashen Ku Jehio Gorum Ria Hast Achin Amach, Akromak Ashias Osmohion. Beshut Ancharna Ku Avakatsa, Nyuhanye Ivan is Anam Hovsa, Ars Essen. Ismaan etel nechromishe fatavuat nuad ayerich shut osht. The terms of endearment are worth noticing even in this short passage. To conclude, uh, Erskine's Grievanen um, constitute not only a curiosity and an important attempt to produce fashionable genre fiction in Gaelic, um, but are also remarkable for bringing fantasy and decadent features um, into Gaelic writing and for reflecting period anxieties concerning gender, class, and politics. There are interesting possibilities of queer readings of the corpus as a whole, and especially of Anche Ekandrokrie Nahrach and Antanamatav, and there is also Erskine's association with Padrick Pierce. In terms of other research directions, I would really like to track down, if possible, Erskine's own reading um, and possible direct inspirations, both textual and visual, look at detective fiction published by Scottish authors and in Scottish periodicals in the period between 1890s and 1920s and the associated gender issues, and also find out whether anybody else tried to produce detective fiction um, in other Celtic languages around the time in combination with the revivalist agenda. So if you know about anything, I'd be thrilled uh, to hear about it. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>